Monday, January 14th, 2019, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. This morning, I want to talk about the sinister institution uh, based in Basel, Switzerland, uh, called the Bank for International Settlements, or the BIS, and how it was uh, key in financing uh, World War II, not just for the Allies, for, but for the Axis countries. And uh, I will uh, look at a book here that I've looked at before, uh, but some of you haven't heard of it, uh, all my new subscribers and viewers, uh, Tower of Basel. And uh, also, just touch upon quickly on this pamphlet. It's a very thin book, uh, War is a Racket by Smedley Butler. They're both related. Uh, and uh, before that, of course, I like to uh, look at what the markets are doing this morning. Uh, it's just gone past 7.30 a.m. London. Where are we this morning? Well, uh, Spot Gold is up $4.5 at uh, 1292 uh, the range has been 1286.80 to 12.93 so we're fairly near the highs here uh, of course usually uh, when the US starts coming in later on in the day gold not all the time of course but usually we see gold being sold off and that's been happening a lot some people have asked me that question well that's just how uh, you know how they chip away at the price uh, it's been happening since I've been looking at gold since I started buying gold in 2002 um, and I've been following the, uh, these markets almost 24-7 uh, especially when I was uh, working in the city of London I noticed those uh, patterns very clearly and these patterns of course are not natural in a market that's supposed to be random correct so that's part of the manipulation. Uh, you see, when Europe uh, goes, you know, Europe closes closes around, uh, let's say, twelve o'clock New York time. Uh, that's probably when you're going to start seeing, you know, the uh, price of gold being chipped away at because uh, the physical market in uh, Europe is closed, and they can uh, just uh, go. Uh, on the COMEX and start chipping away at the, at the paper price at the futures. It's much easier. It's not as liquid as well. Uh, silver uh, down about five cents at 1556. Range has been 1553 to 1567. So silver being kept a little bit here uh, under pressure. I'll show you that uh, chart. You see, they, they don't want it to break above that this line. Um, but uh, we'll have to see. I, I, I just personally think it's still consolidation and silver will break out. Stock market, the Dow is down 200 points. The Dow futures or 0.84% at 23,788. And I just show you a chart here um, of the Dow. It, it, it looks like uh, this rally we've had since just after Christmas is starting to fizzle out. I have spoken before that uh, we've uh, recovered, you know, the 38.2 retracement, that we could go to the 50% retracement, which is around 24,200. But it looks like that's not even happening here. It looks like 24,000 is providing, you know, very stiff resistance. Uh, of course, we'll have to see when the U.S. Come in, comes in what happens. Um, S&P futures is down tw uh, uh, 22 points, so also 0.85%, 2573. NASDAQ 100 futures down 1% at 6533. Currencies, while the pound uh, is down about uh, 0.1% at 12822. Euro is unchanged, 114.67. And the dollar is down 0.4% against the yen at 108.11. Uh, dollar U1, uh, the dollar is up a little bit, 0.1%. We're at 677. Oil, uh, price of oil is down 1.5%. Fit is trading at 51.07 WTI. Uh, bond markets, they're quite interesting actually. Um, the 10 year yield is down 3 
at 267. So as I've said, uh, the bond market right now with the low lower yields in the 10 year that we've seen in the last month or so is not pointing to a healthy uh, stock market in my opinion or economy. Um, of course, the lower the bond yield, that means that investors are concerned about riskier assets and their buying treasuries. Not that I think it's good to have treasuries uh, in the long term. Uh, the yield curve is remains inverted is inverted uh, and now uh, it's inverted from uh, let's see here from six month T bills to the five year the six month T bill is at 251.4 2.514 the yield and the five year is 2.497 the one year T bill is just under uh, is it at 2.595 so uh, that's inverted all the way to the seven years. So that's another bad sign uh, that uh, something's wrong with the economy. I've, I've seen a lot of headlines about uh, first in the UK, how car sales are going really badly. Uh, I've seen uh, headlines about the same in the US. Uh, and that's a very good indicator of uh, the uh, consumer's uh, confidence, uh, car sales. And it's, very, it's still quite important. So I, I think, uh, yeah, here's uh, the, the latest headline about U.S. auto auto sales. It says, cars have just been crushed. The U.S. auto market is officially in recession again. Uh, and I'll read here quickly. The car recession, retail recession have already arrived in the sense that retail sales peaked in 2015 and have gone down ever since. Cars have just been crushed. So I'm not going to dwell into this story, but I'm just giving you a, like a, a, an indicator about uh, what's going on. If you think the Maneco 64 channel adds value to you and you'd like to contribute or help the channel, check the links uh, below in the description. So the Bank for International Settlements. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, it's seen as a just a financial uh, international financial institution like the IMF World Bank it's seen as a regulator uh, a harmless institution right and uh, I'll even read here a little bit about the the BIS uh, for you guys uh, from Wikipedia it says the bank for uh, international settlements is an international financial institution owned by the central banks. Well, yeah, this is the banker for the central banks, which, and I quote, fosters international monetary and financial cooperation and serves as a bank for central bank. The BIS carries out all uh, out its work through its meeting meetings, programs, and through the Basel process, whatever that is, hosting international groups, uh, Pursuing global uh, financial stability and facilitating their interaction. It provides banking services, but only to central banks and other international organizations. It is based in Basel, Switzerland, with representative offices in Hong Kong and Mexico City. I wonder why Mexico City. Oh, yeah. Uh, drug uh, money, maybe? Anyway, and why Hong Kong, which is like a, a Chinese territory? Uh, and this is one of the reasons I'm talking about this because we are being bombarded with all these headlines, uh, even Zero Hedge uh, about war. You know, one of them is China's nightmare. B-2 stealth bombers deployed to Hawaii. Uh, Russian Navy to deploy 30 Poseidon strategic underwater nuclear drones. The rise of Eurasia, geopolitical advantages and historic pitfalls. A new Cold War has begun with China, not Russia. So what I'm trying to say here, uh, whatever we're being told about these Cold Wars or whatever, Russia, China, it's all theater. It's all, uh, these people are just like uh, playing us, the general public. We don't need these wars. And I'll show you exactly why from this book. Uh, it's a great book by Adam Libor, The Shadow History shadowy history of the secret bank that runs the world so that's the book you can find it on amazon on online but what does it say here read from the jacket inside jacket of the book 
and then I'll look at some of the uh, parts that I find interesting. Uh, so the Tower of Basel is the first investigative history of the world's most secretive global financial institution based on extensive archival research in Switzerland, Britain, and the United States, and in-depth interviews with key decision makers, including Paul Volcker, the former chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve, Sir Mervyn King, governor of the Bank of England, and former senior Bank for International Settlements managers uh, and officials, Tower of Basel tells the inside story of the Bank for International Settlements the central banker's own bank. So this guy, he's actually uh, done his research. He's actually spoken to the uh, cul you know, <laughs> the culprits, <laughs> the central bankers. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep going here. Uh, created by the governors of the Bank of England and the Reichsbank in 1930. So why would uh, Bank of England, you know, be uh, interested in uh, working with the Reichsbank. Well, at the time, it was to the excuse they had is to uh, uh, manage the uh, war reparations payment uh, that Germany still owed uh, to the to the Allies, right? Uh, but it goes on to say, and protected by an international treaty, the BIS and its assets are legally beyond the reach of any government or jurisdiction. So. It is based in Switzerland physically, but it, it's a bit like a, an embassy, you know, in a in a country like uh, the Russian embassy in Washington D.C. is Russian territory. So the BIS headquarters in Basel is BIS territory. It's not Swiss. Um, the bank is untouchable. Swiss authorities have no jurisdiction over the bank or its premises. The BIS has just 140 customers, but made tax-free profits of 1.17 billion 2011-12. Since its creation, the bank has been at the heart of global events, but has often gone unnoticed. Under Thomas McKittrick, the bank's American president from 1940 to 1946, uh, and he was a JP Morgan banker, by the way, uh, the BIS was open for business throughout the Second World War. The BIS accepted looted Nazi gold, conducted foreign exchange deals for the Reichsbank, and, used, and was used by both the Allies and the Axis powers as a secret con contact point to keep the channels of international finance open. So that's why I'm saying, you know, we read all these things about war, but... Uh, these wars are just, uh, and I don't want to sound uh, disrespectful of the people who have fought and died in wars or have been injured in wars, uh, but I'm sorry we've all been fooled. Uh, these wars are needless wars. They're wars for to keep the states and the bankers healthy, and I think they're trying to do it again, and we should not fall into that trap. Uh, so... Um, that's the BIS, and uh, of course, War is a Racket was written uh, before even the BIS was created. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, after the BIS, Mr. Uh, General uh, Butler could have said, War is an international racket, right? This, he was just talking about, uh, you know, how U.S. companies did during World War I. Uh, so what about some of these sections that I want to look at here? Well, uh, one of them is actually uh, what happened after World War II, uh, because a lot of people realized, you know, after the war, that uh, this bank was like dealing with both sides. <laughs> uh, so I'll read here from page 123. It says, on July 18th, Ansel Luxford, a member of the U.S. delegation, proposed a new resolution, <coughs> excuse me, that no country could join the IMF unless it had, and I, I, I quote the guy here, taken the necessary steps to foster the liquidation of the BIS. And then it goes on to say, John Maynard Keynes, the influential economist, was part of the British delegation, was furious. Keynes, who was also close to John Foster Dulles, 
while the Dulles family and the CIA suffered from angina and became so agitated by the affair that there were rumors he had suffered a heart attack. He demanded that the resolution be withdrawn or he would quit the conference. This was at the Bretton Woods conference, right? This was at the Bretton Woods conference, right? There could be no linkage between dissolving the BIS and joining the IMF, Keynes wrote to Morgenthau, who was, I think, the U.S. Uh, representative or Treasury Secretary, or Britain would not participate in the IMF or the new bank for an indefinite period. Morgenthau backed down. Eventually, a new Norwegian-Dutch resolution calling for the liquidation of the bank at the earliest possible moment was finally agreed. It was a perfect compromise. Critics were satisfied that the principle was now established that the BIS must be closed down, while the bank supported supporters noted the resolution set out no date or conditions for this eventuality. So the BIS is still in business. Uh, so why why did uh, you know Britain uh, you know and Keynes uh, want the BIS open, even though? Uh, Everyone knew they, they dealt for the Germans during the war. They dealt, you know, they dealt for both sides. Well, because the BIS is the arm of the city of London and Britain uh, is not, doesn't really represent the British people. It represents the city of London. And, uh, and now it also represents Wall Street. It's an international racket. And uh, the other uh, point I'd like to make uh, about the BIS, and it shows that uh, how... Uh, you shouldn't trust, uh, you know, keep your gold, physical gold with the bankers uh, because they will, they will take it away from you. They will find an excuse. Is a section, uh, chapter five, an unauthorized plunder. I won't go into it completely. Uh, I'll just give you a, how can I say, a, uh, a broad a summary of, of what this is. It's uh, just before uh, the war kicked off in 1939, September 1939, uh, the Germans invaded Czechoslovakia and uh, basically the Bank of England and the BIS allowed the Germans to plunder uh, Czechoslovakia. Uh, they transferred uh, Czech, Czechoslovak gold from the Bank of England's account, uh, from you know their account with the Bank of England. They transferred it to the... Uh, to the Reichsbank account at the uh, BIS. So there you go. Uh, the Bank of England is unwilling to uh, give Venezuela back its gold now, but it was very willing to allow uh, the Nazis to take a, a sovereign country's gold. And it helped them do it. Norman Montague, uh, the governor of the Bank of England. So there you have it. Uh, yes, does that mean you shouldn't own mining shares? Uh, well, don't forget, the, the stock markets are run by the bankers. Uh, I'm not discouraging you uh, from owning mining shares, uh, mining stocks. Uh, they are more leveraged, but ultimately uh, the safe haven is physical gold outside the banking system. If you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up, share it far and wide, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, you can also follow me on Twitter, Steam it, and on DTube. I wish you all a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.